Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. A lot of the things we'll talk about today have already been discussed in today's uh, earlier session. Uh, it was covered by Tara and also by Andrew. So I'll try to keep it short. Uh, but overall, we'll talk about exercise in the context of SCAD, when it's safe to do, what kind of exercises are uh, better to do. These are the disclosures. So let's start with the case. Um, so let's talk about Judith, 49-year-old lady who had a recent scab involving her right coronary artery. Uh, she has a pretty stressful job as a lawyer, uh, three teenage children. Uh, prior to her scab episode, she was relatively active. She used to exercise a few times a week, uh, went on a treadmill and, um, in a gym. Since her SCAD, obviously her activities have been uh, curtailed, she's not been exercising as much, she's gaining weight, and she's quite worried about going back to her uh, usual activities. So what kind of advice do we give uh, Judith in this setting as a cardiologist or a family physician um, or a cardiac rehab program? So the, quickly I want to talk about why is exercise a concern in patients with SCAD? What are the benefits and the risks associated with exercise as they uh, relate to coronary uh, dissection? And then briefly touch base on the current guidelines, although uh, there isn't that much in terms of um, data or you know, hard guidelines. So I'm sure this has been discussed before, the precipitating factors for spontaneous coronary dissection. There is a, uh, they talked about the autopathies, medications are associated. Uh, emotional stress, um, but also intense exercise. And many of the SCAD cases that we come across are uh, secondary to isometric exercises or prolonged aerobic exercises, especially rapid onset uh, type of exercise. Um, this is you know, similar to what we see in aortic dissection and aerotopathies that are usually associated with isometric uh, activities. Um, um, so, the benefits of physical activity, despite all the risks and the associations of SCAD and physical activity, uh, of isometric exercises and prolonged activity, I think it's important for us to uh, touch base on the benefits of physical activity. So, it's not only um, you know to decrease cardiovascular risks, um, you know, making your glycemic index better. Uh, but also the psycho psychosocial aspects of uh, exercise that are important. Specifically, we touched based upon um, some of the you know, psychological uh, aspects of SCAD. And being in a cardiac rehab program, being involved in a physical activity has been shown to, you know, for example, decrease depression by about 30%, sometimes even better than medications. And that's related to all the you know, hormonal effects and the chemical uh, benefits associated with exercise. But also uh, being in a, in a class, in a cardiac rehab setting where you have patients who also have, have SCAD where you can uh, you know, talk about your experiences um, and sort of reassure each other. So what are the cardioprotective effects of physical activity? Uh, again, this is review uh, for most of the audience, but definitely anti-asclerotic effect of exercise have been well published, improve lipid profile, decrease your blood pressure, and improve glycemic index. Uh, the psychological uh, benefits of having um, a regular exercise program in terms of decreasing your depression or uh, stress. Um, at the level of the coagulation cascade and the platelet, um, uh, level also there's benefits in terms of physical activity. Uh, it makes the adhesiveness of the platelets less, decreases your fibrinogen, decreases uh, blood viscosity. Um, at the level of the vasculature, the blood vessels um, improving endothelial dysfunction has been uh, correlated with physical activity, which is important specifically in SCAD, and also has antiarrhythmic effects by increasing the vagal tone and decreasing heart rate variability, which is well documented to be one of the markers of uh, cardiovascular health. So overall, I don't think it's a surprise to say that um, exercise is definitely beneficial. Uh, that being said, prolonged level of activity, like today in the morning session, someone was asking about marathon runners. There are 
risks associated with the, th those type of exercise, and not only SCAD, but in general cardiovascular uh, risks. Uh, the absolute risk is small, but the risks are there. Um, and we know that your level of exercise uh, is kind of a J point, J, J, sorry, J curved um, uh, graph when you, when you have um, the, the amount of exercise versus the cardiovascular benefit. You do have some benefit uh, in moderate amount of exercise, but in prolonged exercise or in intense level of activity, it could actually be a small amount of risk. So cardiac rehab program, and again, nicely published data in regards to the benefits of that decreased cardiovascular mortality uh, and morbidity, uh, decreased uh, admissions by about 50%, uh, improving quality of life, um, and also uh, providing patients with development of self-management skills, having that social support network, uh, and also uh, helping with patients to gain the confidence to go back to the usual activities that they you know, typically do, sometimes even going back to work, for example, if they have, they're involved in physical activity. So we're lucky to have the first dedicated cardiac rehab program here in um, Vancouver. Um, and, you know, it's uh, the, the specific goals that uh, we, try to f uh, th we try to follow here in the cardiac rehab program are outlined here, essentially lower blood pressure than what we typically follow, maybe uh, less than 130 over 80, weight training exercises, but low amount of weight with <coughs> gradual increase through the program, avoidance of straining and balsalva, which I'll talk about a little bit more, and also um, good warm-up and cool-down, which is important, and again, and Tara and I spoke uh, in that regards in today's session. These are the uh, guidelines from uh, European Society of Cardiology, specifically for SCAD and exercise, uh, indicating that uh, patients should be counseled against isometric exercises or extreme amount of exercise um, with the idea that with gradual return uh, of exercising is, um, is beneficial. American Heart Association has also, um, there's a scientific statement in this regard indicating that patients with SCAD should avoid prolonged high intensity activities or highly competitive contact sports. Let's say if they're a football player, um, activities that are performed to exa exa exhaustion such as uh, racing, you know, crossfit, boot camp, uh, things like that should be avoided. Uh, any sort of abrupt increases in physical activity without a warm-up. So this uh, emphasizes the importance of a nice warm-up and cool-down, which we do here in the cardiac rehab program. Um, exercises in extremes of temperature. So uh, we avoid um, uh, advising patients to go, have, to go to classes such as hot yoga and performance of that salva maneuver. So these are some of the activities that are um, uh, to be avoided in specifically with SCAD patients. So we talked about a lot about isometric exercises and, and about salva. What I usually tell patients is that um, you know you gotta listen to your body. Anytime you have to hold your breath to do an activity, you know if you have to strain to do something, uh, it's probably not a good idea. And the main reason for that is because of the um, one of the reasons is the blood pressure. Um, jump that we see in uh, isometric exercises. This was a study, an older study that was published. They measured you know, patients' blood pressure during isometric exercises. And you can see, uh, for example, in the double leg press, the uh, blood pressure could um, increase to values you know, up to 300 uh, millimeters of mercury, right? So three times uh, as normal which is obviously not ideal in patients with aortopathies and also spontaneous coronary resection. Uh, this is, again, the Valsalva that is uh, talked about um, often. Again, going back to the isometric exercises, you're contracting your intrathoracic muscles, abdominal muscles, and that exerts uh, pressure on the uh, vasculature intrathoracically, both on the aorta and coronaries, uh, which could lead to um, potential um, adverse outcomes such as dissection. So going back to Judith and our case, um, 
the bottom line is I think every patient with SCAT should be referred to a cardiac rehab program. Um, we should remind patients uh, that although there are associations with uh, intense amount of activity or asymmetric activities or exercises um, and SCAD, it's good for them to go back into a routine exercise program. Uh, hypertension needs to be avoided, uh, both uh, using lifestyle changes and also medical therapy. Uh, weight training um, is important in terms of keeping muscle tone, but it needs to be done uh, in, in supervised fashion and we need to start low and gradually build up. I'm usually saying you know, less than uh, 30 pounds for women, less than 50 pounds for men. But again, these are guidelines which should be individualized and that can, that can be done in a cardiac rehab program. Avoidance of straining, um, avoidance of extreme exercises, you know, such as marathon, boot camp, things like that. And then um, very critical to do nice warm up and then cool down again. You know, so high intensity training is is um, uh, should be avoided, and it's you know very important to do a nice ten minute uh, warm up, uh, get to your map, uh, to get to the predicted heart rate that you want, and then a uh, nice cool down for about five ten minutes after. Okay.